All right, we'll get started. Um, thanks for letting me in your home. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. So many of you I know, some of you I've been to Sacramento and D.C. with, and I worked with over the years. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Mark Cronin. I'm the director of the Los Angeles Police Protective Group. I'm very, very proud to represent you for anything benefits, wages, or working conditions. I'm a 27-year cop, 24 with the LAPD, and 18 on a motor. Um, I've had my spine fused. Um, my 52-year-old body today has been through the ringer. And uh, kind of what you're about to hear is some, something that I'm very passionate about because I've been there and went through probably what everybody at the table has been through. Is there anybody that hasn't been impacted by our work comp system? It hasn't been? Hasn't. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> see, the reality is, is that this impacts a ton of us. And what we tried to do, uh, it, it took two and, a half, two and a half years to get here, um, is to try to take a 30,000 foot view and change how work comp is uh, done within this police department and this city and um, truly affect the culture of Los Angeles police officers. Long time after I leave, the goal is to leave this place better than I found it. I wrote some stuff up here to kind of keep me uh, on track. What we're talking about here is a work comp carve out that's for sworn only and lieutenants and below. Doesn't affect anybody else. This is something that um, we've been bargaining for for the last two and a half years. It's called Alternative Dispute Resolution. It's a carve out for sworn LAPPL members. Um, it was something that started with a conversation I had with the mayor and ultimately all the council members, and it basically was it went along the lines of um, you don't treat us properly when we're hurt. Um, when we're in our 20s, you hire us. And internally and externally, you say you're fit to be a Los Angeles police officer, and you're pristine out of the academy. It's as good as you're going to get. And then things happen. Some things are out of your control. You're involved in uses of force. You're involved in traffic collisions. And you degrade. So some of the statistics are this. Last year, we had 3,000 work comp claims for LAPD sworn. 3,000. 800 of them were neck, back, and spine related. Those numbers aren't going to go down, just by the sheer nature of what we do. This job beats us up. We're also not Tyson, chicken, um, conveyor belt operators. And we deserve better. So I went in front of the Public Safety Committee and I basically said that. You don't treat us like we're prized athletes when we're hurt. And we are ultimately impacted by about 1,200 out of 10,000 that are impacted by a system that doesn't or hasn't been taken care of as properly. So what do you do? You go use your personal insurance, and you lawyer up. Nine out of 10 of us go to Lewis and Merenstein or Strauss or Sherman or Allen, uh, Allen or uh, Allen Snitzer. And then you basically language, language and you're not getting care in a timely fashion. Uh, I'm okay using this example because uh, my, my fellow directors totally Totally okay with me saying this. Uh, we all know Lou Turiaga, who's a 29-year D3. Uh, we rode the AD tour on our bicycles three years ago, and I watched his knee starting to fail then. And he's like most of us, where we just suck it up, and we rub it, and we wait, and spit on it, and it's going to supposedly get better, and the reality is that it didn't. And just like us, basically, it became a point where he started taking elevators, versus stairs. He became more sedentary. So what does he do? He goes to Robert Sherwin at Lewis and Marenstein. Robert Sherwin sends him to Kevin Pelton. Kevin Pelton says, let's take an MRI on that. The MRI takes a long time to get and to get the approval for it. And then once that happens, he's told it's a 12-week orthoscopic procedure. 12 weeks. Nine months later, he still hasn't had surgery. And the final straw for me was when um, when the city attorney's office decided that they want, wanted to depose the agreed to medical evaluator. He had the applicant attorney, his attorney, Robert Sherwin, and the city agreed to this medical evaluator to send him to 
And when that report came out from Dr. Silverman, um, the city decided that they wanted to propose it. I'm like, please tell me what the rationale is. You have a 29 year D3 that can have an orthoscopic procedure and be back to work in 12 weeks, at least in a light duty capacity, that's taken over nine months. We got the, the surgery approved, but he's no different than all of us. Every single one of us has been through that quagmire if you've been caught up in the work comp system. Said nine out of ten of us lawyer up, and you shouldn't have to. If you have a cancer claim or a potential death claim, it probably makes sense to have an applicant attorney. The reality is, is that if you're hurt on the job, you should be cared for and treated properly. Frankly, treated like a prized athlete with the expectation that you come back to work. And our system is such that when you have 1,200 officers that are impacted by a system that isn't taken care of, us, that impacts not only our employment, but you actually have some folks that are actually able to work the system, malingerers. But they don't call me. The malingerers that are working the system and taking vacations during the summer or during the holidays, they're not the ones calling me for help. But I will tell you, uh, and she'll, my wife will attest, that I'm on the phone constantly, 8 to 13 probably on average per day, of an officer, past and present, retired and current, who's not getting proper care. Medication therapy and surgeries are denied, and they're just languishing. So what I tried to do is look at uh, a 30,000 foot view of what could we do to change it. And we can come up with an alternative dispute resolution. It's a carve out specifically for scorn and lieutenants only, lieutenants and below only, league members. If you're part of the command officers association, this doesn't impact you, unfortunately. If you're part of DWP sanitation, civilians, SEIU, this is not something that you have access to. I do expect everybody else to go me too, and this is what we want. Um, I want you to pass this stuff around. Um, this has the PowerPoint that you're about to see. And if you wanted to write notes, um, that would be helpful for you. This has two provisions, or like an FAQ, that will give you a uh, compare and contrast. This has the actual agreement that we have that we have with the City of Los Angeles and the State of California. And lastly, it has two things. It has a pre-designation form, a doctor pre-designation form. This should look familiar, and we'll talk about it a little bit. And it also has a first fill temporary prescription ID form uh, for those of us that need that very first medication fill. And we'll talk about that. So I wanted you to have that so you can kind of follow along, write some notes if you want. ADR has been around for about 14, 15 years. It started off in the city of Long Beach. And Long Beach POA basically approached the city of Los Angeles and they created an ADR which is just a medical provider network list of doctors. That's it. Uh, I use this analogy. It's like you go to the Cheesecake Factory and you have this huge menu in front of you and you just don't know what you want to eat. There's so many choices. And that's what the statute told, uh, the statute allows you to actually pick from. And Long Beach picked an appetizer. And when we went to the table, and it took so long to negotiate this, we threw everything in the kitchen sink into ours. And ours is very robust. And, and ours will be copied across the state of California. Ours is the largest alternative dispute resolution carve-out in the state. And it will be copied. Um, so what did we want to do? We wanted to affect denied treatment and delayed return to work. Absolutely no reason for Lou Curiaga. Imagine if he was pushing a black and white. Imagine if he had to wait nine months and burn up all of his time while nothing happened. That's where we find our, found ourselves with the statutory system. So that's what we're trying to impact here. So. Uh, we want to improve the speed and quality of workers' compensation medical benefit. We want to improve, uh, improve claim resolution time, reduce workers' compensation claim costs, return an injured worker back to work in a timely manner, and change the culture of workers' compensation from adversarial to collaborative. As soon as you lawyer up, it becomes adversarial. The city attorney's office does everything they have available to them statutorily. 
and so does your applicant attorney and you're caught in the middle. If you have one of those neck, back, and spine injuries that I was talking about, remember, we had 3,000 work comp claims last year for Swarm. 800 were neck, back, and spine related. Uh, on average, 222 days to go through that system. And yeah, that's what we're trying to affect you with this part out. So how do we do it? It's, it's oversight. It's governance. I believe, with all due respect, that the, uh, that the um, Protective League has abdicated its responsibility for decades when you were hurt on the job. Uh, it didn't matter who, what director you called. Uh, we would refer you to the back of the timber line. And you would get choices of Lewis and Mary Steen or Strauss and Sherman. Some of you would hear by word of mouth to go to Alan Snitzer. And that was it. And that was all of our oversight. And ultimately, what we were seeing was that nobody was getting care. You'd lawyer up and then you would just stop. And you weren't getting care that you needed. So we've taken on the burden, if you will, long term of oversight. And what we have is a joint labor management working group. And this ADR working group has been up and running for over two years. And that consists of three on the labor side and three on the city side. On my side, on the labor side, I have Karina Lee. She uh, is she's very knowledgeable when it comes to medical pensions. And unfortunately, what we're talking about here are IOD injuries that turn into medical pensions often. So she's on my side. Lou Turiaga is on my side, on the, on the uh, labor side. And Lou brings a, not a, do you think he empathizes after having gone through that with his knee? So he's on my side. On the city side, we have uh, Assistant uh, General Manager Jody Oxman. Her office is right, right across the way here. And then there's uh, Tyrone Spears. He's a brand new work comp administrator. Uh, we removed the old one and replaced her with Tyrone. And then we have a city attorney by the name of Carl Moody. This is a tenured group. Carl Moody used to teach law at the academy. He, he retired with uh, 20 years in a day. And he's head of work comp for the city attorney's office. And he has the heart for work. Here was his experiences back in the 70s and the 80s. Carl said, when I was on the job in the 70s and the 80s, I was seeing the same injuries, and attorney, uh, attorneys weren't as involved as they are now. And he said, I would see um, officers getting cut a lot, and then they were maimed, and they were mentioned off a lot. His belief is that surgeons get paid by cutting you, and there was no utilization review, and officers were being medically pensioned because failed fusions and back fusions in particular were happening a lot. Okay? So now, what, would, what do we have? We have utilization review that's on steroids, and the injuries are still happening. So how do we handle it? We have oversight of Recommending an ADR coordinator. We have an ADR coordinator by the name of Stephen Seamers, who's a, a retired judge. Stephen Seamers was appointed by um, uh, Governor Gray Davis back when, and he was the highest work comp appeals board judge in the state of California. Uh, he is our ADR coordinator. He has been part of this since we started. Member advocate, you, you passed around these cards. This is a new concept. Normally, your adjuster isn't responsive to you. And in all honesty, applicant attorneys aren't all that responsive. You're also dealing with a lot of legal, um, uh, their legal aids a lot, but talking to the actual applicant attorney's heart. Um, we have a brand new concept called a member advocate, and we'll talk more about that here in a minute. But we have oversight of hiring and firing, not only the ADR coordinator, but the member advocate. Mediators and arbitrators. We have oversight of a medical provider network list. And I want to talk about that here for a second. We were all imposed on as City of Los Angeles employees, and it started May 1st. Every single one of us got a letter in the mail from the state. And the City of Los Angeles imposed a medical provider network list of doctors on us if you're hurt. 
And it doesn't matter if you're police, fire, it doesn't matter if you're civilian, man, EWP, sanitation. This is this was imposed on us May 1st. So there's a medical provider network list that we as a working group have oversight over and nobody else does. So what we ended up doing is we added all the doctors that most of us go to. We actually had Lewis and Marenstein and Strauss and Richard, and we had Gold and Julie and Robert and Aaron. We all had we had them in our office a bunch of times and we basically said, what doctors do you send us to? What AAMEs do you send us to? What mediators, arbitrators? So the names that are familiar to you, Pelton, Lavi, Leone, Karazi, Curl and Joe, SCOE, USC Cat, they're all on our list. We have oversight of it, and no other labor or bargaining entity has oversight of their list. They were imposed on. When you go to this website, you're literally going to see the league's logo. It's a living, breathing thing. We need to be able to add doctors and remove doctors that aren't performing properly. And over time, we will do that. Okay. Role of the working group is developed to de develop internal procedures for governing the working group and establishing a list of permanent disability raters and a network of agreed to medical evaluators. About four and a half weeks ago now, <clears throat> we had all AMEs up at the Academy Lounge. We had about 67 of them. And we did this presentation, and we told them what our expectations were. It's the first time that anybody had had all of the AME doctors all in one place. The following day, we went to Chrysler. We have oversight of Chrysler. We have oversight of whether we keep them or not. And initially when I started doing this, it was kind of a scorched earth policy was my initial thought. I was just going to remove them and start from scratch. I had Cambridge way back when, and now we have TriStar. And I kind of thought, okay, well, we're just going to start fresh. And then I learned some, some things that I think you'll find interesting. Number one, my adjuster from Cambridge works at TriStar. Number two, the adjuster pool is very small. And they all basically kind of flock and herd themselves over to a new company. Let's say we went with a different company. They actually will offer a $20,000 sign-on bonus to these adjusters to follow and move. It's a shell game. So the adjusters that worked for at Cambridge, many of them now work at TriStar. Very small pool. Adjusters also have about 125 to 150 cases per adjuster. So if you're one of them, Imagine a caseload of 125 to 150. This you've worked cases before. Can you really be responsive to all of those folks? It's not just active; it's retirees, retirees too. Okay. We have oversight long term of whether or not we keep them or not. So the role of the working group is any issue regarding medical treatment moving forward. It's a living, breathing thing. What we want to do is we want to have a dialogue with our members and with LAPD Sworn. And if your experience isn't anything but good, we want to know about it because we can actually affect change. And I'll tell you about that here in a little bit. So, how does an injury or a claim work? <clears throat> Number one, we need to do better as a police department notifying and reporting. Some of us hold off too long, and we need to actually make that notification to supervisors for the phone call or 15-7, we need to notify better. Okay. Then it's incumbent upon us as a police department to actually take that reported injury and enter it into IBOS, because that starts everything. Once you enter it into IBOS, TriStar gets notified, and then the member advocate gets notified. This is a company. But Maria Mariotto and Associates will get notification as soon as we enter it into IBOS. And she will call you. She's contracted to call you within two days. She's actually calling you within one. On an average day, she's dealing with 13 officers on an average day. That's a call you want to take. If you're like me, and you get the no-caller ID on the phone, I'll let it go into voicemail. This is one of those calls. When she calls you, take it. Let her help you. Guide people to her. Anything May 1st moving forward, she is going to be helpful to you in making appointments, 
and talking to your adjuster. If you choose to lawyer up, talking with your attorney, she's uh, confidentially helping you and advocating for your care. Okay, new concept. So she's going to walk you through the process. And one of the things that you need to be mindful of is cumulative trauma claims. <clears throat> Probably most in this room have filed a cumulative trauma claim. You basically go back to the very first date at the academy and you say, over my 10, 15, 20, 25 year career, I have cumulatively sustained this damage to my body. Okay? If you have a date of injury, a date of a TC, or a date of um, use of force, you have a date of injury. Use it. Okay? When you don't, and you use a cumulative trauma claim, it allows the city attorney's office to question whether or not like the likelihood of that happening because of work or play. They're literally looking at our social media accounts, and they're looking to see what we're doing off duty. They're looking to see if you're bike riding, mountain biking, hiking, rock climbing, skydiving, and they're looking for ways or reasons to deny that injury. So if you actually have a date of injury, use it. Fire does a better job than us as a department in reporting their injuries. We literally have a book in their stations. In those stations, if you go in and you twisted your ankle, you just write it in the book. You may not go off, but you actually notate it. And there's a date of injury when you do that. Okay? So the member advocate is walking you through this process. You also need to know that the city of Los Angeles is self-insured, self-funded, up to $10,000 per person, even if they decide to decline to accept the claim. So get treated. It's really important that officers seek treatment right away versus waiting. Uh, I've had officers that were having heart attacks that went into U.S. Alters. Like, go to the proper doctor, too. Okay? Take care of yourself. If there is a dispute, what we're trying to do this with this system is keep you out of court. In the past, you would go to the Work Comp Appeals Board. Your attorneys would usually file to send you to the Work Comp Appeals Board. And what was amazing to me with all of the injuries I've, I've had over the years is how I never went to the Work Comp Appeals Board. Everything was settled miraculously just before the actual hearing or settlement day. It was settled. Okay. So, if there's an injury or a claim and there's a dispute, now you have mediation that happens within 30 days and arbitration that happens within 30 days. If that doesn't work, you can still go to the Work Comp Appeals Board. The City of Fresno has, a work, has a, uh, an alternative dispute resolution carve-out. And in two years that it's been up and running, they've had two mediations and no arbitrations. It's designed to come up with a solution. It's designed for the left to talk to the right. If you have a doctor that's prescri prescribing you care, and you've done everything that you're supposed to do, nobody should want to get cut. But there are people that are begging for surgeries. And if you think about it, <clears throat> if you've done everything conservatively that you can, you've tried medication, that didn't work, You've tried conservative care. You've tried therapy. That didn't work. Yeah, so you, what are your options? Right? And now those are the questions that we're asking now. If I've got a primary treating doctor that's actually prescribing care, and you're denying it, what's the alternative? So that conversation happens with this member advocate. She is, like I said, about 13 cops right now since May 1st. Every single day she's helping. And Across the board, those that are actually being guided and helped by her love how this is working out. Okay. So, the similarities between the ADR and the old process. Everybody in this room probably has claims, old statutory claims, pre-May 1. Everybody in this room. You're on that right-hand side column. <clears throat> and this is what impacted you and still continues to impact you. This is the quagmire of utilization review. This is the quagmire of not being talked to or knowing who your adjuster is or them being responsive. 
This is where you find yourself in this quagmire. Uh, the city owned you for the first 30 days, pre-May 1. And you go to US Healthworks, primarily. And your experience was usually terrible. And so you'd use your personal insurance. Did you, you get the letter from LAPRA? Did you notice that your paycheck is going to probably be charged more starting this month? If you're like me with a wife and two kids, and Anthem Blue Cross is our personal insurance, our personal insurance just went up $100 a month. The reason for that is, is that so many of us are using our personal insurance for a work-related injury that LAPRA is trying to recover $20 million back from the city right now. Remember when we could do body scan? Yeah. Remember when we could do LASIK? Those were all benefits that were removed. And over time, our, our personal insurance, you're paying more for it, but getting actual less benefit. Okay? That's the unintended consequence when we use our personal insurance. We're part of a group health plan, and ultimately we're paying more for less. <clears throat> we also have drop issues. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. We've all read the Times articles. I'm sure you guys are all talking about it after after this last weekend's article in particular. So, on the ADR side, you have choice when you're hurt. As long as you make that notification to that supervisor, that supervisor doesn't have to take you to the doctor. You get choice now. You, uh, you can log on to any laptop, PC, iPad from home, and you can find a doctor that's close to home versus work. You have more choice. And you don't aren't on for 30 days. If you want a second or a third opinion, you can actually find doctors here versus just being stuck with U.S. Health workers. Yeah. Uh, member advocates there, and she's going to be talking to you and guiding you through the process. And then you'll have mediators and arbitrators that resolve the claim dispute between the employee and TriStar. She is advocating for care versus you having to go to court through an attorney. Okay. In the past, management decided your treatment. Now you actually have some oversight that we have uh, as a working group. Um, and again, we struck nobody as a protective league. We added everybody on this list that we could think of. Okay. Uh, in the past, you interfaced with TriStar and your experience was terrible. You didn't even know who your addresser was, let alone get a call back or an email back. And TriStar supposedly notified you uh, of your claim status. Did you ever get an envelope that was just stuffed with all kinds of paper and just you didn't, didn't even understand it? That was their three points of contact. It just doesn't work. So now the city recognized that and we have this member advocate that's advocating for our care. In the past, you would go to, a, this is what caused the delay. You'd make your claim, and then you'd lawyer up, and then you'd go to an agreed to medical evaluator, qualified medical evaluator panel. This is where you really got stuck. You'd get prescribed care that was denied. Your attorneys would automatically file for independent medical review. You didn't even know it most of the time. And over 90% of the time, independent medical review is denied, and then you have to wait a calendar year to appeal it. It's a statutory thing that was designed not to treat you. This is what caused you languishing 222 days if you reported a neck, back, or spine injury. This was the delay. Okay. Now you have the expedited care with built-in hard timelines of pre-approved panels and an agreement between the protective league and management on providers, and the process is moving a whole lot quicker now. <clears throat> That's what we're seeing. So, I want to talk to you about uh, drop in our culture here. Some of this has to do with us recognizing that we can't put off getting ourselves fixed until the twilights of our careers anymore. The Times thinks that when you go into drop and then all of a sudden you go off and you have IOD things done, that you're double dipping. And it's causing a conversation to be had regarding drop and how it's modified. So if you're hurt, you're hurt. And if you're hurt because of work, you're hurt because of work. Get yourself fixed. That's the design here. Don't wait until the twilight. 
the current procedures for reporting work-related injuries remain the same. As a department, we need to do better at, the, at reporting, and in particular, IBOS entry. I did a the last late reporting report, and I ran the late report for every division of the city. It caused a meeting. I actually met with Chief Moore twice regarding this. We were doing such a poor job in some divisions. You guys weren't. There was no notification for over two weeks. So um, it's incumbent upon us to really take care of ourselves in that regard. Um, we put out a special order as a result of that meeting. And that special order basically mandates 24 hour um, Monday through Friday entry into the IBOS. That's something we can do. And that's our responsibility. Saturday, Sunday, TriStar's closed. But well, Monday through Friday, 24-7, we can actually impact entering in these entry reports. Okay. The current procedures for processing a claim are suspended now that we're in ADR. Everybody is in this now, effective May 1st. This was a big gift. Independent medical review is no longer part of our ADR. We're the only carve-out in the state of California that doesn't have independent medical review. The city gave that up. I think they gave it up because they recognized that we're partners in this. And that working group that I told you about, that three and three, it's designed for consensus. It's designed to work through problems. And I don't use this term lightly, but we have synergy. And we've been working together very well. And I can't tell you how many calls and texts that we do every single day amongst ourselves to try to get a sworn officer called. So we're watching stuff and we have oversight of stuff that we've never had before. Okay? So independent medical review is no longer being utilized. The ADR will enable employees to be treated by specialists faster. And the nature and involvement of TriStar is changing right now. I'm watching them even with old statutory claims. It's like moving a tanker and they're going ever so slowly. But I'm seeing them be more responsive because they know that we're watching them. And I'm able to keep my thumb on them, and if they're not doing something right, frankly, we expose them. I also want to make this offer for you. If you find yourself in the old statutory system, or you have somebody, classmate, somebody that you know, that isn't being cared for, they have an attorney, and nothing's happening, and you need medication, therapy, or surgery, and you're not getting what you need, I want to know about it. I'm going to ask you for a chronologue. I'm going to ask you to basically email me your story. What's going on? What's been prescribed? What's been denied? Claim numbers, if you have an attorney's name, email address, that kind of thing. And I will get the left talking to the right. One of the things that I've been doing since I've been at the league, since 2012, is that. And what I was desperately trying to do is take a 30,000 foot view of how do we fix this long term? How do we change the culture? I think we've done that. That doesn't negate that if you're in the old statutory system with old injuries, but you still have issues, and I recognize that, and I'm available if you need help. One of the things that I will also tell you, and I want to warn you, is if you do go to an attorney, they have a habit of bundling body parts. What do I mean by that? You go to them, and you say, my shoulder hurts, I have carpal tunnel, uh, my back hurts, uh, I have hypertension, I have blood pressure, um, and they bundle them all together. The city goes, <laughs> We'll accept it. And what are you relegated to? What's, what are you left with? One year of 48, 50 time for all those body parts. One year that has to be used within five years. And if you had to have surgery on all those body parts, what would you be able to heal from? Probably not. Okay? You take a, le a lazy way out, and it's just something that I want you to be mindful of. Okay? If you can have them to individual claims for you, that's better, okay? The goal is to streamline the provision of medical care and return an injured employee back to work. Close the claim. Is everybody here? Um, full duty? Okay, is everybody here? Um, is that, that everybody have permanent and stationary status with medical issues that you have? Does anybody have claims that are still open that haven't been closed, even though you're permanent and stationary and you're full duty? 
that happens a lot. We have a lot of these attorneys that don't close stuff out, and then you getting you're getting ready to retire, and you still have these claims that have to be closed. That's something that we're trying to affect here too. Um, pre designation. If you pre designate, you can still pre designate. Um, truth is, is that most of us don't. Five percent of this police department pre designates a doctor. This piece of paper needs to be actually completed, turned into an IOD coordinator for safekeeping at medical liaison before you file a claim. Okay? Five percent of us do this now. You have the choice of going to the doctor you want to go to. Okay? So consider that. Um, question. A lot of information. Just on this pre designation, is there a way to one check to see who we have and then can we just spell a new one if we decide we need something new? I would do one anyways. Oh, yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not even I'm sure I did one already. Medical liaison keeps them, they keep them in okay. safekeeping. The design yeah. is to not have the form or your personal information at the divisional level. So, medical liaison keeps so call keeps, them and keeps see, it, what you have. see if they have, actually okay. have it on file. One of the things that you cannot do with that form that you have in front of you is pre-designate a chiropractor or an acupuncturist. We actually have to them. You also, if you put your primary treating physician like a general practitioner, and that and you have something that's like we need to send you to an orthopedic surgeon or a very specific doctor, that's going to come from here. One of the things that I want you to do is to look at that list, and I want you to see the doctors that are there. It's very robust. We're on. We're constantly adding to it. Um, there are probably a half dozen to nine doctors that the city did not want on that list, and we insisted as a protective league. So the same names that you've gone to, like I said earlier, Lobby, Leone, Pelton, Karazi, USC, Keck, Scoey, Roman Joe, they're all there. Um, I guess the question that you should ask if you're going to pre-designate somebody that's not on that list is why aren't they? Because one of the things that I'll see is you'll get this doctor that has a, a, a call of God hands. Some of these doctors actually, that's how they, they have really, they're really good surgeons. But they're really terrible administrators. And they have really terrible billing in their administrative back office. Or they don't file the reports of your percentage of disability. And that helps with closing your, with your claims out. Right? And if they're refusing to do that, you're kind of stuck. So I see that too. Um, first fill prescriptions, you have that form there. That is, you go to the doctor, and that doctor says, all right, well, we're going to give you some flexural. We're going to give you a muscle relaxer. Or even a, 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 a short supply of pain medication okay, for a week or two. This gets you that first bill. And basically what you do is you go to these locations, these pharmacy locations with this completed, and that very first bill should be taken care of. That's the design for it. Okay. Any other questions? Mark, what if you've uh, gone to a doctor, totally on your own, not on OD, for something like me, I'll give you my example, heart, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. and I was sent to a cardiologist, did the whole nine yards and did all that stuff. Should we file it again with you? Because the city doesn't know about it. I just did this with my own personal doctor. I did the same thing. No different. Uh, and oftentimes, you're going to your personal doctor. If you're going to your annual, they're actually checking you and all that kind of stuff. And it is found out when you are using your personal doctor, right? And to answer your question, this is probably a cumulative trauma claim for you. And you're ultimately being treated and our group health plan is paying for this. So you're probably on medication just like me every single day, right? Probably for the rest of your life or at least until we retire and maybe everything miraculously goes away, right? But the reality is, is that that's coming from our LAPRA, personal insurance, and our pharmaceutical stuff. I will tell you, these applicant attorneys will, if you have a neck, back, or spine claim, or a cancer claim, 
they're actually saying, go use your personal insurance first, and then come and see me. And you're going to pay me 15%. Even though our personal insurance just paid for it. That's, that's the award that you're giving. 15%. Anything else? Some people who before the day the first got the injury, they should be contacting you if there are any difficulties because this um, Maria Mariotto is obviously only available to things that. Yeah, the city doesn't want to pay her for old statutory stuff. She's designed for this new ADR May 1st moving forward. What she will do is what I'll do. And basically, if you call me, I'll ask for a chrono lock for me. I'll ask for that email, and she'll do the same thing. And she will actually get it to people who will make a decision, the left will talk to the right, where in the past, your adjuster's been stopped at your adjuster level, or your adjuster's not responsive and that kind of thing. We don't even talk to the adjusters. We move it a lot higher up, and we have that's about all she can do for old statutory stuff. For me, I've been doing that since 2012. I've been just rattling the cage, and I'll get surgeries approved, and medications and therapies, and all that kind of stuff approved when I get that email from you. Because it gives you an opportunity for the reader to look at that from you as a person. And actually look at this is what I'm, so I, I, I kid you not, some of the stuff that, that I read is sad. And it's just like just being ignored. Something we haven't talked about are our retirees. And we're all going to be one very shortly here. And I see retirees that suffer. And you have these lifetime medical issues. Some progress. You move out of state. You have some doctors out of state that say flat out, I'm not taking California work comp insurance. We are actually flying guys in from Tennessee here to the state of California for treatment. And we have injuries, frankly, that progress and get progressively worse. Your attorneys have been paid. You're no longer a commodity in the city's eyes or the department's eyes when you move. You have no advocacy. And these guys are still calling and asking for help. There's a retirees association, there's a protective league, and these guys are calling constantly. And she will attest. It doesn't matter what time they call. It's, we're important. So it's something to be very, very mindful of. This is going to be all of us. What else? Anything else? All right, I hope my passion shows. Um, this is something I care a lot about. It's a living, breathing thing. Um, I need to hear back from you when you're not having good experiences. I'm going to leave you with this. This is the power of the working group. We had a central bureau officer that went into one of the walk-in clinics here. He had a cyst in the back of his back near his spine. This cyst was underneath his sandbrown. It grew to the size of a golf ball. He goes into one of these walk-in clinics. The walk-in clinic puts topical antibiotic and oral antibiotic. They give him, and it doesn't work. So they have to lance it. They lance it. They have to clean it out, clean it out. They stuff it with uh, a dressing with antibiotic ointment, put a dressing on it and put a maxi pad on him and sent him back to Central where there's MRSA and where there's HEPA. And when we found out about that, we removed the doctor. We deserve better than that. So that's the kind of living, breathing thing that I want you to recognize that we have in front of us now. I've had all of the medical chiefs from Kaiser, from ProHealth, from U.S. Health Works. Oh, by the way, we removed U.S. Health Works from our medical provider network list. We took them off because the experience was so bad for cops. Across the board, everybody said, when we go to U.S. Health Works, it's terrible. So we removed them, and we replaced them. Right now, your choice here is like Reliant, which is right down the street from our office. But the one across the street, off of 8th Street, the guys aren't going to that one anymore. Reliant now is doing surveys. And they're actually handing a sworn officer a nine-question survey after you see them. And I get those surveys on my phone, about seven or eight a day. And I'm able to literally drill down on officers' experiences. So I'm looking for anomalies. I'm looking to see if the experience was not good. Okay, That's the kind of power we have now. I've asked for these doctors to take you to the back of their facilities. I have asked them to offer you a locker 
if you choose to put your sand ground in that locker so you don't have to walk around with an open air exposed gown with your sand brown over your shoulder while you're getting diagnosis mental picture huh but it's how we were being treated okay i've asked for us to be treated like we're prized athletes and um, and when that experience isn't good we need to hear about it anything else